So now let's talk a little bit about the conservation of momentum. And in particular, we'll uh, lay out two, uh, I don't know, laws, I guess, that momentum is conserved in all collisions and the total momentum of an isolated, isolated is a keyword there, system is conserved. So we have two conservations. The first one is just a collision. So we want to look at all collisions. So we just need to, we need to uh, generalize it. So let's suppose that I have uh, mass one traveling at some velocity, call it mass one knot, and I have another mass, not necessarily the same. In fact, let's make it different, traveling at some other velocity. We'll call it V2 knot. So these things, they're gonna come in and they're gonna collide. They're gonna collide um, during the collision. They'll compress and then bounce back the other way. So they'll have some new velocity going in the opposite direction, not the same. The key here is that that force, the impulse right there, the impulse on one is equal to the impulse on two. It's just that they're opposite directions because of the force. So the force of, this is Newton's third law, the force of one on two is equal and opposite in direction to the force of two on one. And the delta T for both of them is the same. So we get the same impulse, just opposite sign. All right. And then impulse we defined to be, I'm gonna try this derivation and see if it, well, let's, let's go with Newton's second law. So that's Newton's third. So um, the acceleration of the, or let's write Newton's second in terms of momentum. So the net force is gonna be the change in momentum with respect to time. So the force is acting on this thing, uh, we'll use this one. So the force of one on two is equal to the force of two on one, negative. So we get the change in momentum on one over time is equal to the change in momentum on two with respect to time, but negative. So what we can do is we can move this over to the other side and we get that the change in momentum on one with respect to time minus the change of two with respect to time is equal to zero. Okay, so if I have a really big change here, then I gotta have less, the same amount of change here in order to have zero. Um, basically, it's just saying that the change in momentum of the two is always has to add up to be zero, which means that momentum is conserved. There's no loss and there's no gain. So anyway, it's just Newton's second law. Momentum is always conserved. So that's for two particles colliding. What if we have a whole bunch of them? So what if I have a system in which, and we're doing isolated. So there's no external forces. Okay, so we have a bunch of particles in here flying around. They're banging off the wall, they're banging into each other. We're just gonna think about this. So let's say one and two collide. Well, we know that the momentum would be conserved in that collision. Okay, so two bounces off and hits three. Okay, so we know momentum's conserved there. And then we know momentum's conserved if it collides with four, and if four collides with five, and so on and so forth. So no matter how many collisions we get here, the momentum between the collisions is always the same. And so we can define the total momentum of the system, maybe big P, is gonna be the sum of all the little momentums. And the change in all of these momentums would be zero, that it would be conserved. So the change in momentum of a system is also conserved because of the little individual ones that don't change. Now, if I had an external force and the external force did something here, um, so reached in and banged against that one, then I could define the change in momentum of the system is the net force with respect to time. I should do dt. It is gonna be the uh, net force, a net external force. And we're back to Newton's second law. That should be a d. The change in mom big momentum. So the change in momentum of a system 
is also the Newton's second law. So the net force exerted on the system. Now the idea though, um, so this would be D big P over time equals zero. This is isolated. This is an open system. It means that there's external forces. <clears throat> um, now the key is that it depends on the system. So um, whether or not it's isolated or open. So if you want to have momentum always conserved, you make it into an isolated system. So if you have a if you have a car, and it's going to collide with another car. If you define your system to be just this car, you know, then it's it's not an isolated system. You're going to have some interaction here. But if you redefine your system and you say, okay, now nah, I'm just going to look at everything. Okay, then momentum is conserved, and you're good. Um, the momentum of the system is what I was talking about, not momentum in general. Anyway, it's it's like energy. It's just like energy. How we would put Earth in the system or not, depending on whether or not we wanted uh, energy conservation. So. There you go.